In a world where one woman tries to start a podcast. How will I ever do this on my own? She thought she would have to get expensive equipment. What? I can do all of this on a free app? She thought she would have to find creation tools all over the internet. You mean it can all be contained in an app on my phone and computer? She thought she would have to do all her own distribution. You mean to tell me this app is going to send it to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and all those other platforms for me? She thought she would never make any money. I don't have to wait for a minimum listenership to monetize? She thought that she would have to find all kinds of different equipment and pieces. But I'm going to download this free Anchor app and get started today. Visit anchor.fm and download the free Anchor app. To be just like her, the ultimate podcaster. Hello and welcome to the Lou Review. This is your host, Rosa, and I'm here today with Chris Williams, the owner of Four Pegs. Now, Chris, what in the world is Four Pegs? (laughs) I wish I knew. (laughs) I bought it with the name. Uh, I do know that it has something to do with the legs of a table and a dog being family and then beer bringing people together. Or my dog fell in a well and saved my life when I was a kid. You know, now it has four that's, peg yeah. legs and we're going to keep it around. Yeah. And, yeah. Or maybe it's like my daughter wants to use our dog as a table and set things that's, on its that's back. Fair. Yeah. Then the things fall off, though, so it doesn't always <laughs> They don't usually out. sit still when you do that. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> right? It'll take a lot. But um, So, Chris, um, we were talking earlier, and this restaurant, Four Pegs, has been around, you said, about a decade. Mm-hmm. And then you bought it in 2019 and kind of, not entirely, but sort of rebranded it? Yeah, uh, it was kind of like a burger spot with beer uh, when uh-huh. I took over. Uh, we, Which is always good. Oh, no, it's always good. <laughs> Everybody uh, wants beers and burgers. But it was bar service only, and so mm-hmm. I brought it to where it was full service. We brought in my barbecue and uh, added some cocktails and just try to make it more of a restaurant than just a bar. Yeah, and more of a, like you said, cocktails, so like more complex bar menu. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I've been in here another day where I got to sit in the dining area and we tried a whole bunch of different things. And uh, you've got like Brussels sprout, coleslaw, and then is it smoked mac and cheese? Or is uh, it's, it it's beer, beer cheese mac and cheese. Cheese, mac and cheese? Yeah. But you've smoked a lot of different things here, not just barbecue, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've smoked uh, alligators here. Oh, um, okay. Uh, what else have we smoked? It's, uh, uh, you know, any kind of game meat, lamb, rabbit, uh, pork, brisket, obviously chicken. Chicken wings are our number one seller. Yes, uh, I've heard so much about those wings. But yeah, we smoked uh, vegetables, peppers. Recently, watermelon. <laughs> yeah, watermelon. Oh my gosh, I was totally joking earlier. I was like, <laughs> but you haven't smoked watermelon, have you? And then you're like, oh, well, you come to. <laughs> More reasonably, yeah. I mean, literally today we're, gonna... we're doing that. <laughs> but just today, I must have sensed it <laughs> right. somehow in the air. But you didn't even do it here. Was this one of the experiments you do at home? No, we were doing it here. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's for the event Thursday. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you would do a lot of experimenting at home to find the flavor profiles that you want to bring to the restaurant. and. Yeah, yeah. I, I do. I order meat boxes. I just got one in today right before I got here mm-hmm. uh, with just different things. And I try out different flavor profiles, smoke them, and see how it goes. And then, I mean, unfortunately, having so many smokers here, I can do a lot of experimentation here, too. So. Yeah, that's such a creative process, <clears throat> isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you get to make art that people eat. Mm-hmm. That's pretty neat. Yep. Did you always want to have your own restaurant? or? Uh, I did. I mean, from a young, pretty young age. I've been doing about 23, 22 years, something like that. And so I figured out about junior year in high school that I, this is kind of the direction that I wanted to go. And then, now, is that when you were a Dairy Queen? Is that yes. Right? <laughs> it's working the window. Dairy. You turned that blizzard yeah. <laughs> upside down and it didn't fall out. Did. You're like, I can do this. You don't do it, you get in trouble. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, so I started out there and then you know, I had a food truck for... But well, I still have the food truck uh, mm-hmm. for about 10 years now. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then just eventually, when this place came up for sale, it was kind of perfect timing because I needed to get back into a restaurant. I briefly had one down by UL's campus. Oh, okay. Not the best location, even oh. though you'd think it would be because there's tons of kids, but mm-hmm. they're broke 
uh, yeah. after the first month of school until they get back <laughs> to Christmas break. So. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I didn't mean for this to be a seasonal restaurant. <laughs> right, exactly. But it is. Exactly. But it was a lot of fun. I learned a lot there uh, mm-hmm. that I brought here. So, What's something that um, has surprised you since you've been owning your own restaurant? Um, Besides the seasonal students. <laughs> <laughs> Just the the amount of people managing that you have to do um, it's a lot like a tumble life all the time it's a lot like babysitting because everybody's mm-hmm. got a different personality or maybe even teaching I don't know but mm-hmm. it's, everybody's got a different personality and you're trying to get mold them to get them to work together mm-hmm. and because they're not here to be together they're right. not here because they're friends they're here to work a job yep, they so, money and that's why yeah. they're here but yeah, yeah to get them to be a team uh, which mm-hmm. is something we've really excelled at I mean we've had people who have worked here for three years which is unheard of for a restaurant yeah especially in the kitchen um, oh wow yeah so yeah we've really built a great team here that's fantastic so i need to ask you you've got all these events going on but you've got a really big event coming up soon um, a taste for life mm-hmm. uh taste for life uh full name is a taste for life raising a uh, raising awareness for an at-risk industry. Uh, it was born, born when uh, Anthony Bourdain died in 2019. Uh, it really hit me and a lot of my chef colleagues and service industry people really hard to see somebody who seemingly had everything going for them, seemingly seemed extremely happy uh, to find out that, that they were hurting so badly that they would take their own life. Mm-hmm. And it, it really made me look around and, and wonder how many people were hurting like he was and how many people were struggling and just were afraid to say something or didn't know how to say something. Mm-hmm. And so we created this event to make it okay to not be okay to try to erase that stigma. Uh, we partnered with NAMI and uh, the Pete Foundation to raise money for them so mm-hmm. that they can get, get the word out. That's awesome. What is NAMI? Uh, NAMI is the National National Association of Mental Illness. Oh, okay. uh, and so this is the Louisville chapter specifically that we're raising money for. And then the Pete Foundation is a suicide prevention uh, foundation. And that's Pete, P-E-T-E, like Peter? Yeah. yeah. The Pete Foundation. Yeah. And um, so we're going to have lots of different restaurants represented. You're going to shut down Spratt Street, is yep. it? Yep, And it'll just be a bunch of tents and stuff, like a fair. Kind of, yeah. But it won't just be food. It'll also be music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got uh, four bands for the day. Uh, and then we have speakers throughout the day that are going to kind of come and tell their, their journey with mental health. Uh, and then we'll have the foundations on, on site, with, along, with, along with a few other mental health places that can offer resources and help people figure out what to do if they need help. That is phenomenal, okay, because I love fundraisers. If anybody's been following me long enough, they can see me at all these fundraisers, okay? It's a great party. But having those resources there of the places that people can get hooked up with to get help on the spot and know that when I walk away from here, I have the source of my help. Mm-hmm. It's not just, oh, I like this idea of yeah. helping people. You're setting them up to get connected. Because I think so many times people are like, oh, I'll do that later. Yeah, you get and carried then they're away like, with Wait, the fun. Who else I got to call? <laughs> oh, I don't know. So I guess it won't ever happen. <laughs> so way to go. Now, what was your role in creating this? Uh, I was, I was, it was me and a couple other chefs uh, created it. It was, I guess it was my idea first because apparently I'm in charge of everything. Oh, okay. So if you're in charge of everything, you definitely get to claim full credit, right? right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) Anybody who wants to fight you for that can have all that work, right? exactly. It is a a ton of work trying to find sponsors and donations and things for the silent auction and finding 25 chefs you would think would be easy. Mm -hmm. We're all busy. It's not easy. Right? It's like people keep wanting to eat all the time, <laughs> right. and they gotta keep working. Yeah, that's why we did it on a Sunday. It, it okay. opened up a little more opportunity for some of the chefs. And uh, nobody will be at Chick Fil A that day. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Don't worry about that. So, tell me some more about. Was there anything else you wanted to tell us about that event, real quick, before we go back to Four Pegs? Um, you know, just that one hundred percent of the ticket sales are going to those organizations. Uh, okay. We were able to raise fifteen thousand uh, dollars in two thousand nineteen, and we Ooh. did it in twenty eight days. Like that's how long planning took, wow. or how long we had. Uh, this time we got three or four months, so we're hoping to double or triple that and really help these organizations out. And this one will be on what date? Uh, October second, from three to eight. That's my birthday. <laughs> oh my goodness! I need to. You have to come. For my birthday. <laughs> I really need to be there. <laughs> 
and you know, I don't think I'll count calories that day because it seems like it would be impossible. Yeah, twenty five different uh, bites or samples. Uh -huh. That's yeah, yeah. That's, there's it's no calories birthday. in that at all. And it's your yeah. birthday. Yeah. It all, it's <laughs> all, it all negates. <laughs> So what is your vision for Four Pegs going forward? What do you want to see change? Well, we are, uh, part of my vision is already coming true. We're going to remodel the kitchen in the next okay. couple of months, uh, really get it some more room because currently it has less room than my food truck does. Uh, oh, okay. That's awkward. <laughs> yeah. But we're able to get put out an amazing amount of food in that small kitchen. The, the team is so strong. Uh, but I think when we expand, it's going to allow us to serve even more people yeah. and, uh, you know, we already have the stand at Lynn Family Stadium uh, where we're doing food and then the food truck. Fantastic. So just trying to branch out maybe and open something in the future somewhere else, maybe in town. Um, okay. Or in my 10-year plan to retire to Portugal, mm -hmm. maybe open something there. Right. <laughs> we were just talking about your love for Portugal. I haven't heard many people <laughs> rave about Portugal. So you're so well-traveled. I can't even handle it. So, um... Was there anything you took from your trip to Portugal that you brought back to this restaurant? You said yeah. the food was incredible. Yeah, it here. was. Try to use more locally sourced things. Like we're working mm -hmm. with a, a local farm called Fisher Farms. We're getting our ribs and our uh, beef from them. And that those oh, meats are processed four days before we put them on a plate. And that's from Fisher Farms, mm -hmm. you said? They're in Jasper, Indiana. Okay. But yeah, that, I mean, that, that's some of the freshest meat I've seen outside of the Portugal uh, or and being on a farm and eating at the farm. Right. <laughs> and in Portugal, you're not, you were talking about these islands that you were staying on mm -hmm. and the food was all grown on the islands in that volcanic Volcanic soil. dirt. Yeah. yeah. And it's, everything grew organically and every, everything was organic, organic, yeah. which is great. Uh, but everything grew so fast and big that it's just, the food was plentiful and inexpensive. And <laughs> yeah, it was great. Yeah. Speaking of plentiful, you just let me try your Cuban and that was delicious. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. You want a plentiful Cuban, you come to Four Pegs because this is good. Now I do need to come back and try your chili. Yes. Do you want to tr tell us about your award winning chili? Yep. So the, uh, we won uh, the Great Chili Cook-Off, People's Choice, and Judges choice with us first team to do that and that, since it was at phoenix hill and i think it had been like 20 years since Whoa. that had happened uh we won you the mean critics and the common people <laughs> don't they, 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 right no, no it's crazy <laughs> uh but we won the uh, logan street market cook-off we swept it again this year Whoa. uh but yeah it's a brisket uh pork belly burn-in and chorizo chili mm -hmm. uh we smoke literally every aspect of it down to the tomatoes mm. uh, and it's just yeah it's a really good hearty chili but you know it, it works in the summertime too because we still sell a lot of it then too so. right oh well, that's fantastic well i'm really excited about everything you've got going on here this is a great location you're on goss avenue over here uh, what would you say are the landmarks you would tell? Uh, well, we're kind of in the heart of Germantown, so you know, uh, you know, everybody knows the post because they got great pizza. We're, we're two true. doors down from them. That's uh, true. Right off of Eastern Parkway, and just you know, kind of close to the zoo, and it's really right. such I a would say centrally next, located. Place. Right, you can't. It's not close enough to the zoo to smell the zoo. I will <laughs> say that it is close to Norton Audubon Hospital. Mm -hmm. If you're familiar with that. And so if you've not been over here, definitely come check out Four Pegs for some good smoked meats and now some, uh, anything new coming to your cocktail menu? Uh, we're actually going to be launching our fall menu in, when's fall start? 27 days. So. Is that going to include the smoked watermelon thing or is that it, It'll depend different? on the, how the contest goes <laughs> on Thursday. Okay, okay. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for taking the time to My talk pleasure. to me, Chris. My pleasure. Thank you. Was there anything else that you really just want people to know about Four Pegs that you feel like doesn't get said? We have the best wings in town. Oh, well, there you go. If you don't believe me, come try. <laughs> <laughs> and if you'd like to accept his dare, go right ahead. <laughs> All right. Follow the Lou Review on Facebook and Instagram and hit subscribe on this podcast so you can hear the next exciting interview with one of our local business people. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.